Hi, so this is the uh, fifth now video in this little mini series, and in this video, I'm going to look at some quirky bits around um, restrictions within AD and settings within AD and how they're reflected on the Ubuntu machine. Hi, I'm Matt, welcome to Crazy Logic. So this video is going to be a little bit of uh, varied with lots of different ideas that I just came up with. So first idea is uh, what happens if you have a local user and a domain user with the same name. So with fully qualified domain names turned off, this could become a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly jump into AD and I'm going to create a user called Dave. So let's log on as Dave. And I'm going to log on using my local user or local administrator account password for this attempt. So I am in, in what I believe to be the local Dave or the uh, machine Dave. So I'll quickly do a who am I? I see I'm Dave, but we've turned fully qualified domain names off. So that's not particularly surprising. If we look at the uh, groups, you can see that I'm a member of a load of the local groups on this machine. So I'm pretty secure in saying that I am the local Dave. So let me log off and I'll try and log in with the fully qualified domain name of the Dave account to see if that works. So you can see that my uh, attempts there, all of them were rebuffed by Ubuntu. So Dave cannot log on to this machine. However, that's also possibly because Dave was not a member of the Linux admins or Linux users group. So I'll just add him to that group or her, and then we'll try again. So uh, I must have mistyped that password, but now I can log in as dave at domain.local, which is my fully qualified domain name, and I use my Dave, uh, my AD Dave's account uh, password. So I'll quickly go into a terminal. I'll do a who am I? See who we are logged in as. Still logged in as Dave, no surprise, because we turn fully qualified domain names off. But if I look at groups, you can see I've only got my Linux groups uh, assigned. So I am effectively logged in as my domain Dave, not my local Dave. So you can have both and you can log in as both, but you'll need to have the fully qualified domain name on the domain account, even if you have it turned off in the settings as we discussed in the previous video. So next thing I want to have a look at is disabling an account within AD. So user one can log on to my machine. That's fine. So I am going to disable the account. User one has been disabled. You get the little black symbol or the little X or whatever that symbol is next to the user account. I can't see it. So let's try and log in as user one. So again, here we get a generic password authentication that didn't work. So if I then re-enable that account and jump back to this machine and try logging in, you can see that on my second attempt, uh, I was able to log back in again. So uh, disabling and re-enabling accounts within AD is reflected uh, correctly on the machine for login purposes. So this uh, user must change password at logon or at next logon. This is something you would normally use as an administrator if you've changed someone's password you might give them a uh, crappy password and expect them to change it, or you may force them to change it. Um, so if I set that here, we can force the user to change the password at the next logon. So I'll show you how that works. User one. Uh, so I'll enter the old password and it says password expired, change your password now. So you have to then re-put in your old password. It's a little bit uh, backwards really. And then give it a new password. So I tried a password that was in the um, dictionary and it didn't like it. So I'll have to try another password. And that slightly more random password has worked. So I'll now be able to log on. And in theory, that should have also changed my AD password. So I'm logged in as uh, that user. So 
I will jump over to my Windows 10 machine and show that I can log on with the new password I've just changed. So here in the Windows machine, I'll try logging in as user one, and I'll try using my updated password. And this looks like it's gonna log in just fine, which is what we'd expect. So if you force your users to change their password on the next logon, and they do it on the Ubuntu machine, that change is reflected as you would expect within AD and therefore on other network clients. The next thing I want to do is the smart card logins. So you may have a user that you force to use a smart card to log in in a Windows environment. So for user one, in the account settings, I'm going to jump down here and there is an option. Smart card is required for interactive logon. So I'll set that one there and then we'll jump back over to this machine. We will log log out of the current user and then we'll try logging in uh, as user one. And you see password authentication didn't work. So uh, this setting here does work for Ubuntu machines as in it restricts access if you don't have a smart card uh, attached to your Ubuntu machine. Ubuntu can do smart card uh, authentication for logins. I don't have a smart card keyboard, I don't have any smart cards, so I can't test this AD linked smart card feature. So I've disabled that as a, as a uh, restriction on the account and I will try logging in again. And you can see when, uh, when that restriction on that account is removed, logon goes back to normal. There is actually um, another bit of a weird quirk. So let's go into the settings. So a user can change their own password um, in the normal way that you can change password on Ubuntu. So here, user one is who I'm currently logged on as. I can go to here, I can put in my current password and then uh, use a new password um, in here. And that change is reflected within AD. But equally, I can see the other accounts. So this is a network account. Uh, and Dave is the local administrator. So if I unlock this, it's gonna ask me for, for Dave, which is the only user that can do that. It's the only user with um, privileges on this machine. I can change my own password because now I'm acting as Dave, or I can change the network passwords, but I have to have the current password. Now, the exception for this is, if I go out and log in as Dave, so logging in as Dave, my local admin here. If I go back into the settings, in the users, I can see the network accounts as well as my own. So obviously I can set my own password, fine. But what's a bit weird is I can change a network user's password, except this doesn't work. So if I change a password to something uh, different. Okay, so on this machine, I've told it to change user one's password, which I do not have authority to do. Um, if I now log out, I'm gonna try logging in as that user that I just changed the password of with the new password that I set. Now we would expect this to fail. And then if I try my old password, or, or rather the user one's old password, the one that Dave was trying to change, we should still be able to log in with the old password. So it's a bit weird because Dave doesn't have authority to change user one's password, because Dave is a local account, user one is an AD account. Um, the user interface looks like I can, and behaves as if I am changing the password, however, AD is not allowing that password to be changed and I can still log in as that user with the correct password for that user which is the one from AD. Uh, so yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna leave this video. It's a bit of a weird one because it's kind of a load of questions that just needed to be answered. Um, I hope this has been useful. Uh, Seek some comments down below on other scenarios you can think of that you would like me to test or 
would like the answers to and I'll see if I can get those um, done but yeah thanks for watching like and subscribe if you like this kind of content